So good morning, everybody. I hope you enjoyed last night the discussions and uh, eventually um, the time after the presentations. I realized it was a long day uh, full of presentations, full of discussions. I hope you're using the opportunity to meet colleagues and to talk about uh, your developments, the challenges elsewhere, and how probably together we can meet the challenges uh, in a more effective and efficient way. Um, this morning we had feedback from Canada. They are uh, watching us <laughs> over the live stream. They said it's a beautiful stream and they really enjoy the discussions. So it's um, very unfortunate that Ilya Lemoine cannot be with us, but uh, I know that they are sitting in Canada <laughs> and watching us. So it's good to have friends all over, all over the, um, the world, really. Um, obviously, our European partners are most closely uh, home. Um, and uh, this morning, I would like to talk about a new format, ECML Training and Consultancy for Member States. Uh, this format was introduced at the beginning of the previous program, and we have the inventor, the founder of this new program with us, um, Valik. <laughs> it was your idea to do something new, to do something which uh, goes a little bit beyond the ordinary, beyond the usual European project frame, beyond uh, what we've been done until then, uh, really as a main focus of our work. The idea was that, yes, uh, the ECML is a European platform, a network for all the representatives, the experts from all our member states who come together, mainly in Graz, uh, share their ideas, share their expertise, and then go back home and uh, disseminate. At the same time, we are fully aware of the fact that we have 33 member states and developments are quite different. Challenges may be different. Circumstances are different, there are different curricula, there are different ways of uh, structures for teacher training, etc. So maybe the ECML should do something else in addition to the, the central work here in Graz to better uh, meet the needs in the different member states. So the idea was uh, respond in a more effective way to the specific needs in, in the member states then support the ongoing reform processes uh, in, in the countries. Um, and the difference between the first and the second one is uh, to ensure that really there's ongoing, to ensure that we participate in the ongoing specific developments in the different countries, which again then will feed back to the developments in Graz. The mediation of ECML work, of obvious, is another uh, motivation to do that and to make good use of the resources in practice. Now, some information about what it was, uh, or what it still is, uh, because this is the final year of the program. Um, in the beginning, we had quite a, a large number of offers, and uh, some of those offers were not demanded, they were, they were not requested. This is why the circle is open here. Uh, some of those offers were not demanded, so eventually we took them, let's say, out of the program. Now, a new offer came in that is Colirom, uh, David Little, with the, um, the offer to provide support for uh, Romani. Um, and that came in in the course of, of, the, of the program. In addition, we have the electronic ELP, ICT Ref, Relang, relating tests to the CFR, adult migrants, and Karap and Fripa. Now, we had 60 requested activities. Most frequently asked activities are Relang and Fripa Karap. And that means that really 33 countries requested training and consultancy. And that right away tells us that this is really a, a very successful format. Um, it's worth mentioning that amongst those 33 countries, there are also non-member states. And yesterday we heard the example of uh, Greece when Greece was not a member state of the ECML, they could still benefit from the, uh, from the training and consultancy because they came in under, uh, as an EU member state and could therefore request uh, this training. In total, it was 83 activities, 83 workshops, consultancy activities, expert and network meetings. Some of those activities do take place here in Graz. The, um, uh, the introductory meeting at the beginning of the year where we invite local organizers to come to Graz 
and to discuss their needs to prepare for the, um, for the activity which will then take place in the member state. How it works? Well, first of all, it's important to find out about in more detail um, the, um, the content of the offer. And at the same time, um, the, the technicalities, the organizational details are, um, are on the website. Uh, then the person who is key to this offer is the governing board member. It's the governing board member who requests this offer. Um, in practical terms, it will, in many cases, be um, a key teacher, a key expert, somebody who is very active in the field. And this person will then get in touch with the governing board me member, the, the official representative of the member state, um, make a case for why he or she thinks it would be important to have an ECML expert team in the country. And then ideally the, uh, the governing board member um, signs, signs up to the idea and then requests such a training and consultancy for a member state. Um, this is done first uh, at the first stage at, as an informal request, simply an email um, saying in our country we would like to have a training for uh, this and that topic possibly in the second half of next year. This is a very informal email addressed to either to me or any of my colleagues, really. As a next step, um, there's a request template where we would like to have more details about the envisaged activity. Now, this is then asking about uh, contact details of the so-called local organizer, the person who is in charge with organizing the activity in the member states. Um, a question on uh, what do you really want to, um, to get out of this, what is the, the expected outcome and the expected output of such an activity. So in, in a certain uh, detail, in a cert at a certain level of detail, we would like to know from you or from the governing board member what it is really that you expect from such uh, an activity. Uh, for this year, the deadline is next week, Monday, I believe. <laughs> So there's not much more time to do something about it. Um, this is why, this is, so to, so to speak, last chance. <laughs> you mean this year or next year? This year, this, this year. year. <laughs> 15th December, <laughs> Monday, next week. <laughs> Tuesday, thank you. Tuesday, Tuesday next week. This is why on your chair you find uh, this brochure, well, this, this flyer really, which gives you an overview of the themes that we are offering for the next program, for which, for the first year, 2016, again, the deadline for, our, for subscription is next week, t Tuesday. Uh, you also find on your chair, I believe, the, uh, the request form, which specifies the kind of things that you would like to do uh, under such a, an activity. Um, then, following this brief overview, there will be um, an exhibition, a fair upstairs, in, uh, uh, just in front of our offices, where you can then find out details about uh, the themes offered in this brochure. You will meet the presenters, you will meet the, um, the coordinators of these activities, and this will be an opportunity for you to find out um, uh, in, in more concrete terms what uh, the offer is about. Uh, you could make a case of your own situation and, and get a feeling for whether you think that it, it would be worth to make a last minute <laughs> call to your governing board member, or in case you yourself are the governing board member to yourself, uh, <laughs> saying, well, this is really the time to put in uh, to fill in possibly only uh, as, a, you know, as a provisional version the, the template so that we are aware of the fact that yes, indeed, you are interested to have such a, a training uh, event in your country next year. Uh, the deadlines for the years to come are even earlier, the 1st of November. So this is really a preview if you think, well, we don't manage until Tuesday. <laughs> But uh, we would be interested to have something in 2016, 17 or 18. Next year, 1st of November, would be the deadline uh, for the submission of the template. Uh, before that, we would be happy to find out, to have an overview of, um, uh, well, where there is an interest and in which themes there would be an interest. Now then, um, 
it is important to identify a local organizer. This is the person, I've mentioned that before, who is in charge of the organization of the event. This is also the person who is key to, um, to the communication with the expert team in question. So this is the person who should really have a good understanding of, of, this, of the context, of the needs, of the training needs, of the target audience, uh, because this is the person who is then communicating directly with the, the expert team, the ECML expert team, uh, to brief them about your specific context um, and then to prepare together with the team the envisaged event. It's also the person who is expected to set up the event in terms of finding a venue, um, uh, inviting the relevant expert, uh, the relevant uh, participants, sending out the invitations. So there's a lot of, of work involved in this. It's important to find the right person <laughs> to do that. Uh, and this local organizer will also be invited to come to Graz uh, at our cost to a, a network meeting where all local organizer for this particular uh, um, theme are invited to discuss directly with the team, uh, again, the specific needs, a possible agenda, a program for the event, settle for dates, etc. Um, two team members uh, will then go to the, uh, to the event in your country. They will moderate and they will also help with the follow-up. Um, it's, uh, it's an important aspect of this activity that it's not a one-off uh, activity, but that uh, the team, the ECM expert team, really launches a process. And that certainly requires a follow-up in terms of staying in touch with the local coordinator. We are asking the local coordinator to hand out a questionnaire to find out about, um, um, to get some feedback from the participants. Uh, we at the ECML gather that feedback, so we at, um, in Graz, we also have an overview of, um, um, of the results of the activity. And then, of course, we have a keen interest that these, uh, the, the things discussed, the materials produced, the ideas um, presented are then followed up uh, in the member state. Now, there are challenges, <laughs> obviously. And I came across a very nice drawing from uh, Benoit Cliquet who is a very gifted uh, uh, drawer. He did that a number of years ago. Um, can you read it? It says, Dear parents, we are now going to teach mathematics in Eskimo and Madagascar. <laughs> Which uh, really shows how difficult it is for an expert team to go to a country they've never been before, to a country where they've been in touch with this local organizer who is really key to making this event a success, um, who has had some information about what's going on in Iceland, in Armenia, in Finland, oh. and then go there and really try to meet the expectations of the audience, which is quite a challenge. I myself never did it, but I'm sure there's many stories to tell about this challenge. Now, what are the success factors? Obviously, um, there needs to be a relevant topic. Whatever you're requesting for your country needs to be a topic that is really high on the agenda in your country. <coughs> then we need a certain degree of openness, flexibility, and ambition. That's three words. That's, that's a lot in one box. <laughs> and it's many really different things, but it means that Still, the experts are European experts. They have a very specific background which covers a very broad range, but they may not be you know, experts in the educational system in your country. So it requires from the professionals in your country a certain openness to, um, to discuss the, the issues relevant for them in a wider perspective. At the same time, it requires the expert teams, the ECML expert teams, to really try to get a good understanding of what the issue is in a particular place. Oops, that was the wrong move. <laughs> okay. A will to do things. Again, that's easy to say. Um, but I think whenever we say we make the effort, uh, we put money aside to serve uh, a specific audience in a given country, there needs to be a will to do something about, about something. So um, um, together with this openness and the ambition, 
um, there needs to be a vision to do something in the longer run, which is not always given. Uh, in particular, in a situation where we know that resources are very limited. So that's something to look at beforehand, I believe. If you come to the conclusion, well, actually, it's difficult to find the resources. And I'm not sure about you know, my, my target group, my participants. Would they be open? Would they be willing now, at this particular moment, to really engage in such a discussion, which is to be seen in a wider framework? Uh, then maybe the, um, the chances for success are not so, so good. We need a committed local organizer. I've mentioned that before. It involves, it involves a lot of work. Last but not least, amazing <laughs> expert teams, amazing professionals. Um, this is a very English way, I think, or American way of, of saying it, amazing, amazing. <laughs> it really means that they do a lot of work and it leads a lot of commitment, a, a lot of will to do the things. Um, right after this, you will have the opportunity to talk to such amazing people. <laughs> I'm sure you yourself are amazing people. Uh, it requires a lot to come to Graz just before Christmas to take this time off, knowing that you are working under a very heavy schedule. So we are all amazing people in a way. I'm not speaking about myself. Um, <laughs> But you know, we, it needs to come together. So I'd ask you to consider these success factors beforehand, because if you put in, you want to make this a success. You don't want to waste people's time. Um, and there may be other success factors that I haven't thought about, uh, and our experts will be able to tell you uh, what is necessary beforehand to consider before you ask for uh, an ECML uh, training and consultancy. Now, looking forward, uh, yesterday evening we had a preview of the next program, and you might ask yourself, why, why is this format now such a big part of the new program? Now, the truth is, we, we simply do not know how big, you know, how, how much of the program it will be, because we do not know to what extent you will actually request these activities. We've seen in the previous or in the current program that there is a strong demand, but at this stage we simply do not know will there be even more demand, will there be less demand. Depending on the situation in your country, will there be more resources? Is that likely? Will there be less resources and what kind of impact? So simply we do not know at this stage, but we do know that in a way we are thinking globally, but in order to, to make things happen, we need to act locally with your teachers, with your networks, with your people that you're working with in your network. Uh, and unless we do it, nothing will happen. So I do think it is um, a very, very important format. It's important to broaden the ECML expertise. You want the ECML to be in a position to not only think you know, at a European level, but to be clearly aware of what's going on in practice. And it needs that kind of, not only communication, but experience in practice uh, uh, to, to make sure that the center is really a center that is relevant, that is effective and efficient in whatever it is doing. Now, the good intention gap. I'm, uh, I'm sure this room is full of good intentions. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is something that is up in the air. There are these very important developments, and I hope you've come across interesting materials and websites and ideas, approaches that you think would be great if they would be put in practice. And then there is practice, and in between there's the good intentions. And this is a format, I believe, where we can do something about it. Now, finally, there's the saying, es gibt nichts Gutes, außer man tut es. Quickly ask, who understands this? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> of course, there is an English translation, and it's even more interesting to look into French. Le bien n'arrive pas tout seul. There's more. Il n'y a pas de bien que ce que l'on fait. Le bien se fait par action. And the last one is my favorite: se faire du bien en faisant le bien. <laughs> So that's really the idea about this format. You're now invited to go upstairs to meet the amazing teams, uh, to ask in more concrete terms what the offers are about, 
uh, and possibly to address a specific uh, issue in your country and uh, ideally to find out whether, uh, whether you think something can be done about it. Possibly next year, if that is the case, be quick, deadline next week.